Welcome to the Collingwood Earthship. I'm Matt Code, the uh, owner builder of this Earthship in Collingwood, and I just wanted to take this opportunity to share a bit of what we built here and uh, hopefully give you some direction as to what might be your next steps in your Earthship dreams. We did the whole front south facing glass, of course, just like a standard Earthship. The, uh, it's all vertical glass. We just felt for uh, ease of construction that if we stayed vertical, we'd save money um, in that portion of the, of the build. We're gonna go directly into the garage. For heating, we decided to go with a wood-fired boiler. So we stoked the, the wood here in this boiler and it um, pumps the water into this uh, holding tank. And from that holding tank, it goes to um, one of the three jets into the floor and goes into the different six zones of the house that are all controlled by thermostat. So this system was uh, installed by Nottawasaga Mechanical, uh, but they also put a backup system. So if I'm not burning wood, it's heated by an on-demand propane system as well. In the early stages of building the airship, we, uh, we tried this clay plaster. It was a little flaky, it uh, wasn't holding well. We were able to find reclaimed logs from a log home building company, and that's really his scraps. Uh, so we were able to get that um, in trade for fairly cheap and, and then it put them in uh, with, with two six by sixes on either side and then create the, with a um, lath, cement lath plaster this here and, and uh, gives it a good sort of finished look. As we pass here, you'll notice that we've got our electrical panel. We decided to go a, a grid tie system. So um, we actually just signed a deal with Sunflow Solar where we're gonna have solar panels put on. So the maximum you can put on a, a um, residential unit is um, 10 kilowatt system. So we've installed, we will we'll be installing a 10 kilowatt system that will grid feed and give us, um, I think it's 28 cents a um, kilowatt and what you pay is about 10 to 15 cents a kilowatt, so that's how you make your money back. In building the Earthship, we knew that this would be a, uh, a home, but also a business place, which has been great for my wife. She's been in here since January, training her clients, and so this is her studio. So we've got weights and balls, everything all natural. Um, but what's, what's great in here is she was concerned about the temperature, obviously. It's, it's the heat of the summer, and when you walk in here right now in the heat of the summer, it's, it's cool already. So we're just being back in the Earthship, where you're buried, two-thirds of the Earthship is buried in Earth, as you may or may not know. And, and so it, what I say is it passively works off of geothermal principles. Uh, and then if you look here, we've got this cooling tube, which is about uh, 17 feet long going through the Earth. And out the other end, it's, it's screened in so that no animals can get in. Um, but the air is traveling through that, those you know, 17 feet of earth and it's cooling as it comes into the house. And then through what's called the stack effect. So the air is drawn through there and then out the whirlybird vents. And those whirlybirds help to draw the air out through the house so that there's a passive air conditioning. The other thing that allows the, sort of the cooling of the house is there's these little vents here which are part of the HRV system. Uh, and the HRV is a, a heat recovery ventilation system that's required in all houses now. Yeah, back in here to the greenhouse. We've been able to harvest some of our kale and Swiss chard uh, through the season, which has been great. Uh, my mom helped me with planting the seeds this year. This is um, where we have access to the water that's underneath. This is gray water. So when we wash our hands and or have a shower, that water goes into this um, planter cell. And the planter cell is lined with EPDM rubber and the uh, composition of it is in the bottom is a, a foot of a gravel which is similar to the, the gravel driveway it's all clear stone and then a layer of fabric cloth and then one foot of sand a layer of fabric cloth and that sort of helps to filter out any particulates and we will only use bio um, solvents so that they'll, they'll sort of break down in there and then the last foot of soil for the plants to grow in the gray water, when it comes in, uh, has a shutoff valve as well. So the water will go into this tank. And if for some reason we need to fix or repair it, we've got a large shutoff valve that we can shut off. And then that gray water would flow into the septic tank outside. If we look up in the ceiling, we, we've got sort of near these vents here, the whirlybirds on the roof, and they're drawing the air up and out. But again, the HRV is running all the way down the house. So some of the vents are drawing, like in here in the greenhouse, they're drawing the moist air out from uh, over top of the, the veggie beds. Um, and then the ones that are going into the studio are dumping cool, fresh air in there. So we'll check out the uh, studio bathroom here that we had installed. Um, 
Each of the bathrooms are set up so that the toilet is um, drawing rainwater off the roof to flush it. So uh, what we have is two different valves on the side so you can either choose to be pulling water from the road which is you know from the town water or we can be drawing water from the roof rainwater uh, which is stored in two cisterns out the back. Um, and we haven't run out of rainwater so there's enough storage to continuously flush the toilets which saves a lot in the end on, on water costs. So we'll head into the kitchen and so we decided to keep our kitchen living room together as a large great room obviously open flow which is great great for air flow as well um, again the vent is in in each of the room there's there was two vents in Sarah's studio two vents in our living room kitchen and then one in each bedroom and those vents are again are sort of passively cooling the place so we're going to head through the living room and just show you um, into the bedrooms cool feature in this is just our truth window that we built in so that once everything's all filled in you'll still be able to see the tires and the, and the cement plaster uh, that went into building it and, and the number of tires that went into building it was over a thousand tires. Uh, we probably had over a hundred um, volunteers come and help over the two years of the build as well. Uh, so it's great to have a lot of community support and um, both from humans as well as the people that, that donated the tires were often um, people that, that you know sold and put tires on uh, but also local landfills donated tires to us um, so we had a lot of, uh, of great local companies that just allowed us access to the tire. So this is our bedroom it's a light coming in so it's, it's been a great space. We've got a lot of reclaimed lumber in here from a local wood yard Bill Brown's um, just really took all of their offcuts, their wood that they weren't using as much of. But we were able to sand it up and finish it, take a peek in the bathroom. All the tiles in all the bathrooms were, were also donated by another gentleman who came to check out our ship, said, hey, I'm really inspired. I want to build one myself one day. I'm willing to donate these tiles to you and trade for someday. You'll come and help me with on my airships. And then the last bedroom here, we've got a built-in closet behind a headboard. So we've got a headboard, Around the back, we've got a built-in closet, and then again there, as in each room, there's the cooling vent tube that helps to draw air through this bedroom and give it some, some circulation as well. While we're down here, we'll scope out the other bathroom, which is a pretty neat piece as well. Got a lot of woodworking in it, and a lot of bottle work in it. So again, the wood um, for the sink came from the Log Home Building Company. A lot of the bottles that we have, in the wall were donated by um, just locals, uh, whether they have, have been drinking or someone, some of them were vases actually, the bottom of the green and orange ones were vases that we were able to cut both of the vases and tape them together and create a cool effect of this flower um, built right into the wall. So we're back outside of their ship and uh, the overhang is something I didn't mention earlier on is we have this three foot overhang which is a, a typical design in a passive solar house but not typical in an earthship. Earthships usually have um, a slanted roof on the front face to allow for solar panels to be placed. And um, so again for ease of construction when our um, Douglas firs arrived they were 34 feet long and I didn't want to cut off four, three or four feet of them to, uh, to allow for that flat surface. And, you know, would have taken a lot more time to, to build that extra angle. So um, we did a, a, what's called just a straight slope shed roof. And um, this overhang also protects us in the summer from the sun so that it doesn't come into the house as much either. So it keeps us cooler in our, in our summer. This whole wall here, of course, would have been tires. And now we've um, taken field stone or granite rocks and, and built a wall up and around it. There's a lot of fun for kids when they come and check out the place. And, climbing along the side of the wall. Uh, we've got sort of 300 feet in depth here in the property. So in the back, we've got some uh, gardens that we uh, rent out to locals. So we run a community garden, a not-for-profit called Free Spirit Gardens. And this just allows um, people that don't have access in their own backyards or their own property to grow food. This allows them access to do that here. And then these people are watering with our rainwater that's uh, harvested off the roof. A couple of propane tanks we talked about earlier, the, the heating system in the house being run on on-demand propane. So we looked at natural gas. They, they didn't have a natural gas line coming to our property yet. So this was just, uh, just a, a quicker, easier solution to have propane dropped off here. We had to do a, a bunch more tire work here to support this earth to hold in our, um, our, two, our two tanks that are catching rainwater off the roof. And, uh, 
What we use as a filtration system is really just a leaf guard uh, here in, within the um, yeast trough. Uh, you can see we don't have many trees. We have some trees that are at the front of the property, but none that overhang the roof. So we don't have too much sediment that's getting stuck in here, which is great. This rainwater goes in um, directly into the two tanks and then as you saw in the house, we have those two sediment filters that they go through before they get to the toilets. And so that's how we purify the water enough to, to be able to flush the toilet with them. There's about uh, 5,000 gallons in water storage is, is what's underneath our, our feet here. Uh, so that really does us even over the winter. We didn't have any issues with uh, not enough water last year. Uh, again, the main source of our water is from the town, but this flushing the toilets and using it to water um, plants inside and outside of the house um, is, is a great sort of second source for water. To deal with freezing in this system, what we did is uh, buried four inches of SM or insulation, uh, which is a foam board insulation. So we had four inches of that and then um, a couple feet of dirt. And um, so for every inch of um, SM you have equals a foot of burial. So usually you want things about four feet deep for the frost line. So that sort of equates to about four feet deep frost line. But the tanks have got an overflow so that if, if they do fill up too much, then the water is just going to spurt out here. Um, and then the other thing that's in this area is the cooling tube. So this is the outside of the cooling tube that we saw on the inside of the house. So we just recycled two pieces of um, window vent and, and covered over this and duct taped it in there for simplicity and it seems to be doing the, the job of keeping the animals and critters out right now. Uh, so just we went to a window company and said do you have any extra screens and they just pointed us to their garbage can and grabbed some screens out of their garbage and they were happy to give it to us for free. And these are some leftover sample tires that uh, we had some Earthship Academy students helping out to finish some of these walls and learn about tire pounding and and um, so when a tire is finished, you, you should be able to walk your hand all the way around the tire and feel that it's solid all the way through. And these tires would be like a couple hundred pounds. This is a smaller one, it's a, it's a 185. So at the bottom course, uh, the 185 is one of the numbers on the sidewall of the tire. The bottom course of, of uh, tires are, are about 255, 265 we started with. And then we went up 11 courses uh, and in the top row we have 195, 185 um, size tires and, and so they get smaller as you go up and they also batter into the wall so there's a slight angle to you know, resist the forces of the earth. Um, the other thing that's inside are, are buttresses. So every 15 feet there's a cement buttress column that's tied into the bond beam of, of the roof of the, the system so that again so the earth doesn't press into the, the building and all that stuff specked out by your structural engineer. So your team that you need to, to build an earthship, you need a structural engineer that can you know, draw your plans for you. You need a mechanical engineer uh, that can spec out what kind of heating and cooling system you need and how the water will be dealt with. Uh, and then you need an architect to draw the scope of your plans. And all those um, people on my team will have that listed on the website. So if you're interested in, in using some of the people that helped me with that uh, or have questions about you know, what their services were, you feel free to send me an email and be happy to direct your point in the right direction. So thanks for checking out my airship here in Collingwood. Hope this inspires you and gets you interested in doing something for the environment and, and, and being a part of the, the movement to, to help save this planet and uh, all the best with your future endeavors.